Love it. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks once again for joining me. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Zach is the VP of Sutherland Insurance. It's a fifth generation family owned business. Uh, Zach, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you took over the business from your father and then your grandfather before him. So you guys started with some pretty humble beginnings, but you've quickly built uh, a reputation. You're one of the most trusted and well-recognized insurance brokers in Southern Ontario. So thanks for joining me. Absolutely, Brock. I appreciate it. And yes, it was going back to it. My great, great grandfather started it. Um, and yes, we've, we've gone through a lot, seen a lot of changes over our time and, and how we operate and how we found our success. So it's been a wonderful journey and uh, looking forward to a lot more to come. That's excellent. That's that's really cool. Great, great grandfather. Wow. That really goes back. So I'll start with the open ended question. Can you tell us a little bit about your early days in Sutherland Insurance? Yeah, hundred percent. I've been working there since I was thirteen. Uh, a lot of the uh, the nepotism that goes with the family business and the joys of working in the summer. Uh, but I got to learn every role in the office through my time post university. I went even during university. I was working there and then post as well, working through every role through the office just to get a real feel for what was needed and, and what was going on. And then over the last six six to seven years is when I really started in the management space and working with my dad. And, and beginning to transition kind of that role and what we wanted to do going forward. Um, so the nice part is I have a really good feel for every single facet of what we do and have been able to, you know, find efficiencies and implement changes through that process. That's interesting. So you've you've gone through every major role, the, the very intro stuff, all the way up to now managing the company. Taking the garbage out to uh, running the show. Absolutely. Nice. Good for you. That's awesome. Good come up story. Uh, so fast forward to today, then insurance is very competitive. We all know that. Uh, but you've developed a strong relationship with your customers. How do you think you've been able to differentiate yourself from a lot of the other big players in the industry? I, th I think a big part of it is personalized service. We we pair each client who calls in with an individual salesperson as well as an individual service person. Uh, no matter the size of the policy, the size of the account, there's at least two people that you're introduced to. And those two people, we have a wonderful job of retaining our staff. Um, but those two people you have the contact information for going forward. So it isn't a process of picking up the phone and getting a cue and talking to someone who's never heard from you process is reaching out to your person, uh, the people who know and trust and wrote the policy from you from the start. And uh, that formula isn't necessarily as scalable. And that's where you see some of the larger players go to the more call center environment. Um, but for our size and our space, it's working for us and something we believe is the reason why we retain uh, well above 93% of our of our clients on a yearly basis. Yeah, that, that's such a fantastic retention. And I think I know we talked about this many times off camera, but that personal touch, not waiting on hold, getting the same person every time you call and somebody that actually knows you, your business, your life insurance policies, all these things that I think are so important to your retention. Absolutely. It's it's something we, we firmly believe in. It's made a big difference for us as we go and not something we're going to look to abandon, even as we do scale. it's uh, It comes down to we believe in building the foundation first, so making sure our service team is ready to handle what we have to come and then bring it in. To, and so that service experience, again, there's issues all the time. Insurance is an incredibly misunderstood and frustrating right. element. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a big part of it. But for the most part, we were there and on, you know, we're on the side of our client trying to do what's best for them. And, you know, in uh, what I would like to say, 100% of the situations, but that's always in the eye of the beholder, the joys sure. of the marketing piece. <laughs> well, well, for the most part, you definitely have a, an extremely solid track record and, and definitely a great reputation in the industry. Uh, so next question for you. Insurance is a long term game. Uh, when investing in marketing, this is a big question. How do you think about your ROI when you have such a long retention on these policies? Yeah, I think that's that's a wonderful piece. And this was brought to us through a consultant we looked at when we were initially planning out our next year. We put together about a 10 year plan for our business. And uh, it was just brought up in such a wonderful way, focusing on the enterprise value of, of the policy. And with the way a home or auto insurance or business insurance policy works is we get paid the same commission every single year. 
So at a 93% retention, you can just do some quick math to say that we are going to maintain a policy X for just over 8.23 years approximately on the, <laughs> on the quick math, but well over eight years on the, for the every policy we bring into the office. So when we look at it and say, okay, our marketing spend is, you know, cost per acquisition, let's say it's $100 per, per client, if you will. We're looking at what we can potentially make not only on the policy we sold initially, but any future potential cross-selling, as well as what that will be over the course of the enterprise value. So that roughly eight-year term. So instead of saying, you know, sometimes on smaller policies, commission and after we pay out the salesperson may only be, you know, $60, $70, whatever it is. Uh, but the real value of that to us is four or $500 because we can assume we can maintain it and won't be paying the commission. And, you know, that then all goes back to the house over the period of time. So it's uh, it's a wonderful way to kind of think about it, not from a, it's, it's easy to jump into anything, I guess, where you look at it and say, okay, if I look at dollar for dollar commission I brought into the marketing spend, especially in insurances, last I checked, most expensive Google AdWord out there. Right. Uh, it's not something that you can expect to jump in and go dollar for dollar right away. And if you do, you will be very frustrated because there are a ton of people who are incredibly, incredibly good at this and have budgets that are, you know, into the tens of millions on an annual basis. So you're not going to be able to compete at the gate with a small budget and, and you know, kind of a hope and a prayer. Uh, but when you start looking at it from the perspective of what you can acquire and bring in and what that means to the overall enterprise, it's uh, it paints a much nicer and, and cleaner picture of what you're really trying to acquire. So you're not even looking at this from a 12-month ROI perspective. You're looking at the lifetime value. Your retention can be decades in some cases. Yeah, we have clients who are who we often hear is like my grandfather, my great grandfather was a client. That's how I got introduced to you. So you hear these 60, 70, 100 year relationships sometimes that they go back, which are incredible stories for us. But it, it's something we, we hope to replicate with with our delivery, even when we're meeting and our biggest struggle was we were very, you know, have a reputation in our community and in our area. Some some are very philanthropic and we're constantly involved in the community. Uh, and we have a wonderful base in the Guelph area and surrounding area, but you know nobody knows us outside of that. And this is where you know the digital frontier is such an interesting piece. But how do we then portray and deliver on that service? There's been incredible, you know, there's been challenges within it. The retention isn't as high um, for the more digital client, which makes a ton of sense because there's not a lot of ingrained trust and value that's come with there. But we've worked on ways to make sure we are portraying what we're doing and giving that back to the clients because most clients out there, especially for their home and auto, it's becoming an online transaction. And, you know, they want to speak to somebody when they need it, but it's getting out there that, hey, would you rather wait on hold 45 minutes when you get into an accident and hopefully talk to somebody who probably knows nothing about you or pick up your phone, quick text, quick call, hey, my person, this happened, help me. And, and that's what we are here for. And that's where I think we can make a huge difference. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Insurance is one of those things that you don't need until you need it. Uh, but when you do, you definitely want to get a hold of the person that's that can help you. Definitely. Well, it's great that it's snowballed for you. And I'm sure that wouldn't have happened without the level of service you guys deliver. So there, there's a lot to be said for that. Uh, it's, it's it's everything. It's There's a lot of wonderful, you know, incredibly sales-driven organizations in the space that do an incredible job of lead generation and conversion. Um, but cracking that code is something that in terms of the retention piece of the service side is what you often see more with the more traditional brokers like like ourselves. Um, and how do I then parlay in both? And again, that's how I'm constantly thinking about it is, okay, let's start to really drive the sales funnel, uh, but make sure we never forget what got us here and what really, you know, kind of, uh, feeds, feeds the mouths, if you will, the, the baseline of how we make our money. Yeah, that makes sense. Acquisition is one of many, many pieces, but it's the service that's really what, that's, what's going to sustain you over time. Absolutely. So uh, a couple specific marketing questions, and, and this these are selfish questions for me. Um, but before we started working together, was there a time that you realized you wanted or needed to hire a marketing agency? Yeah, very much so. I, uh, I actually met with a um, an individual and uh, was just blown away at what he had done with his um with his online business and his thought process and the way he thought about the experience of a client. 
from a digital way and, and the cues you could look for and how you can transition them. And in that meeting, I was, I tried to hire him, <laughs> but he was off to bigger, better things. And my next question was, do you know anybody? Um, and he recommended agency and, and you were one of the names he recommended. And that's obviously the referral is going to be the, the, the warmest way to start it. But we did then speak to multiple agencies to see who would be a fit for what we were doing. Um, and I wanted somebody who wasn't jaded by what insurance is. That was a big piece for me because I didn't view online marketing from an insurance perspective the way I saw it being done. And I wanted somebody who was willing to take that test and try it out with me with, for, for kind of the vision I wanted to put together. That's interesting. I, I've never heard that from you before. I actually didn't know that that was in your in your decision making realm. Um, okay, well, that's yeah, that's a good answer. Good to know. Um, is there anything so you hired or you interviewed a few other agencies? Is there anything that made us stand out other than the not being jaded piece? <laughs> the not jaded piece, I, I, that, that was part of it, but it really was it, the referral was a big piece of it, but it was your presentation as well. And your willingness to think outside the box, but also think very systematically about the customer experience and exactly how that can be leveraged and touched. There's all sorts of great ideas out there where we were failing is the technical ability to actually execute on them. And that's where I needed somebody, your team in this case, to help jump on and really take on the technical side of taking on delivering the experience we wanted to in a really real and impactful way that kind of translates what we've been able to do on that person to person scenario locally and scale it to the more, you know, provincial, potentially national angle we're looking at. Uh, what, so still delivering as much of that experience as we can in a way that's, you know, controlled in some certain cases automated, but at least process driven um, at the very least was a big part of it. And now that you have a lot of these processes in place, are there any notable changes or milestones that we've hit in the past, I think it's almost nine months now that we've been working together? Yeah. And it's a combination of our, you know, I think everything began to click over the last three months. Um, we hit in our last three months, we had two of those months for our highest retention months going, which nice. is uh, you know, from that service side and emphasizing that. So that means even with all the new clients we are onboarding, retention is staying incredibly high uh, in growing, actually, which is fantastic. So we're delivering in ways we hadn't before. And that's clearly helping our existing and new clients be engaged and stay around with us. But we also had our largest sales numbers, sales months in terms of total policy count, as well as overall sales dollars um, in April and in in June. And that's part and parcel with new hires. Um, so the individual, because that traditional relationship isn't something we're going away from, but also the additional volume of additional leads we've been able to generate um, through the through your team here at Digital um, that have just really kind of hit that perfect timing and medium where we've been able to convert on both ends and see this whole kind of process start delivering, you know, we had never sold more than 200, or sorry, only twice ever. We all sold more than 200 policies in a month. And we, last month we were 257. So that growth is fairly exceptional. And we certainly attribute uh, a, a decent percentage of that to everything we're doing here. That's fantastic. That's, yeah, that's excellent growth. Uh, even if we can contribute to such a small micro piece of that, uh, I'm, I'm happy to hear that it's working and, and helping. Absolutely. Well, appreciate last it. Last one. Uh, I won't hold you for too long, um, but I'd love to just know what the future has in store for Sutherland Insurance. Yeah, um, we, we have very aggressive goals over the next 10 years, but it's sustainable scalability is is what how I like to focus on it because I can see the nuances of, I mentioned before, how sales organizations in the insurance space work and how they you know eventually hit a critical mass where you can lose a lot of that personal touch. Um, and that's something I'm incredibly cognizant of from, you know, some very successful and some failed ventures that I've been tracking over the, my insurance, you know, my 20 years in the space now. Um, something I want to make sure we're really controlled on, but we have a, a not only a people plan in terms of how many people we believe we need based on our KPIs to kind of dictate our hires and our trends and how it goes, 
Um, but we also have that growth plan attached to it as well. So we're very cognizant of both sides of it, making sure we're maintaining and bringing in great people uh, to continually deliver that service and that, that you know, that ability, that kind of warm, warm smile on the other side of the, on the other side of the phone. And we believe that's entirely controlled by, um, or at least certainly aided by our ability to um, stay engaged with our staff and keep them motivated and keep them happy. Because uh, that that can certainly certainly helps the process of delivering on again insurance is a horribly misunderstood product to begin with, and usually when you're picking up the phone, it's because something bad happened. You missed a payment or you got an, a, a claim. That's that's really the, the the reality of it. So we want to make those challenging experiences as pleasant as possible. Um, and and thus far we we have a great team that does it, and we just hope to keep that moving. That's excellent. That's excellent. Yeah, being well versed technically and and dominating these social channels is important. Um, but ultimately, this is a people driven business, as it is for myself. I mean, all of our business comes from referrals as well. Uh, so yeah, that it's clear that that piece is not going anywhere. And I like your comment about slow and steady growth. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it, we're in a fortunate situation, and that's the the joys of a traditional long term family business. We're established and steady. We don't are you know, speaking to investors and trying to go to the moon, it's, which is an awesome journey in its own right. Um, but we have the, you know, the, the ability to do it in a controlled way, uh, in a way where we can invest strategically and, and continue to grow. So as I see the digital side of Sutherland and us continuing to reach our presence around, you know, being a significant part of, uh, what we hope to accomplish in the next 10 years. That's fantastic. Well, I'm, I'm happy to be part of the journey with you. Appreciate it, bro. Thanks so much for joining me, Zach. Really appreciate it. No worries. You have a good one, buddy. You as well. Take care. Cheers.